remember your name, you'll be fine. How do we have Tresca? Oh, we're on the air. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kayla. Welcome to tonight's um, school board candidate debate. Um, we have with us five candidates running for school board. We have Kathy Ray, Fred Sturdivant, um, and Mary Townsend who are running, running for their three-year positions. And we have Linda Winker and Piotr Stemyashkin running for the two-year positions. Um, we're going to start by allowing each of the candidates up to five minutes to introduce themselves and kind of talk about what they um, are going to do if they're elected to school board. So we'll start with Mr. Stemyashkin. Well, good evening, and uh, thank you for invite, organizing and inviting me. My name is Piotr Stamieszkin. Uh, I have been K president for uh, uh, 26 years. I live with my wife, Rachel, of Mitchell Road. And two of my daughters, Maya and Karen, graduated from a high school, uh, from a whole Cape system. Uh, Karen graduated in 2002, and Maya in 2006. Uh, in terms of uh, my objectives and what I would like to accomplish, it's really all about achieving better level of education for um, students in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, and um, we have a good system, but we can have a better system, I think. And um, it has to be a system that is not only good from educational perspective, but also uh, it's supported and afforded by whole community. Uh, in terms of priorities, it's really, again, education, and this is through better, stronger, more integrated curriculum and renewed accountability among st it's for both all students, parents, teachers, and administrators. Also, I would like to see, in terms of the priorities, focus on more mutually uh, inclusive environment and more respectful environment. And um, uh, finally, now, these are probably my, two of my priorities. Uh, the question is, of course, you know, why am I running for this, for this uh, school board, especially now that my daughters uh, graduated already uh, from the system? And this is because uh, I've observed the system for many years, and some of the things that were not quite right 20 years ago are not quite right now. There was some change, but not enough change. I would like to accelerate it. Also, I think that, uh, the, for example, the budget process is too divisive and it should be better, more transparent, and again, it should not divide our community but rather unite. And finally, I really think that we have some stewardship responsibilities. Our school is good, as I said, yes, and recently we were named in the top 1,000 schools in the U.S., silver status, that's great. But then I look more carefully about some of the criteria that are used there, and it looks at achievement versus other schools in our state, and it looks in participation uh, advanced placement exams, just participation, about 25% weight, and then the achievement in placement exams. And it would be great if all of our students were ever to compete only with children from Maine or the U.S. But the truth is that it's a much bigger world now, and I think it's our responsibility as adults in this community as, as, and as people who can really affect the change in the system to work with, again, with students and, and administration and teachers to create a system that produces students that can compete on a national basis, international basis. And I don't see any reason why our programs cannot be as good as programs anywhere in the world. We're a small, smart community with a lot of resources. So this is, what, this is the reasons why I'm interested in this position. Thank you very much. Well, good evening. And first of all, I'd like to take a moment to thank Mr. Jordan and his students for hosting tonight's event. And my name is Linda Winker, and I'm running to, for re-election for one of the two-year seats on the school board. And I currently live on Fowler Road with my husband of 21 years and my daughter, Megan, who's a junior at Cape High School, and my son, Patrick, who's a fifth grader at the middle school. And for those of you who don't know me, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. I'm a graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School, and then I went on to get my Bachelor of Science from Roger Williams College in Rhode Island. And shortly after my husband and I were married, we relocated to Minneapolis, because that's where my husband was raised. 
within a few years, we purchased a home there, started our family. And then when my daughter um, attended elementary school in one of the suburbs of Minneapolis, and at that point we decided that we really wanted to seek out some better educational opportunities for her rather than having her in a large metropolitan school. So we decided to move back to Cape Elizabeth. So in 2002, my husband and I moved back here with our children and we enjoyed the rural setting that Cape Elizabeth had to offer. Of course, it was my hometown, so it was easy for me to get settled back in here along with my family. And right now, I am currently working as a foreclosure prevention counselor. And I work with a large nonprofit organization. Primarily, what we do is provide educational resources for individuals that are facing foreclosure. So as far as the economic conditions going on, I'm kind of on the front lines of dealing with folks in this tough financial crisis right now. And as a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board for the past three years, I've had quite an opportunity to serve on several of the committees here, including the personnel, finance, extracurricular, policy, and as well as the Hannaford Field Committee. All of my work on these committees has proven has provided me with a lot, a lot of knowledge regarding the district's policies, its guidelines, its needs, its challenges, as well as its strengths. And I've come to really appreciate the role the board has to act strategically and effectively while keeping our goals in line with the interests of the entire school community. If elected, I feel I'm prepared for the challenges that our district currently faces. And I know over the past several years have been tough tough ones economically for both Maine and the entire country. However, I do understand that history of our economy has been a cycle of downturns followed by recovery and expansion. I'm willing to take the time to find the places to trim our budget, but not at the expense of sacrificing our educational standards. I'm also, uh, I'm also not willing to completely dismantle the great work that we have done to build our district because our costs are currently exceeding our expenses our revenues, excuse me. And finally, I truly believe it's important, now more than ever, that the citizens of Cape Elizabeth become more involved in the decision-making process. I would welcome the opportunity to remain an active member of the school board and would appreciate your continued support and suggestions. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Mary Townsend, and thank you for having me here this evening. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My professional background is in public relations and communications. I received a degree in journalism from the University of North Carolina and have also been an active volunteer um, in community organizing and political activism for most of my life. Um, Cape Elizabeth has been my home and my husband's home now for 12 years. We have three children, one of whom was born here and is fortunate enough to call himself a native Mainer. Um, like many people, we chose Cape Elizabeth because of the historically strong school system. I've been involved with the schools ever since my first child, Sam, entered kindergarten. He's now a freshman in high school. So I've had experiences with all three schools in the district. I'm well aware of the teachers and the administrators in the system. I've spent a great deal of time advocating for the school needs and was I was involved with the bond referendum that allowed us to bring the kindergarten students back to the elementary school setting and allowed us to do um, necessary and critical renovations to our high school. This past year I was involved in um, the budget validation vote and trying to make people aware of the issues around um, the budget. And while I've thought about running for school board for several years, I felt particularly strongly about running this year. Um, I think we've been treading water for many years, but now we're at a critical crossroad. Uh, there was a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes um, that says, it's not so much where we stand, but it's in the direction in which we're headed. I feel that the direction in which we're headed um, needs a course correction. Uh, we've had five years at least of underfunding and we're in a place where our investment per pupil is well below our peer communities. Uh, we are starting to see the frayed edges in areas like technology and student wellness and curriculum development. 
Um, I think our school system has done a good job operating under lean budgets, um, but this year, for the first time, cuts were made that have the potential to negatively impact student learning. Um, in addition, our school budget process took nine months of effort from our school and town employees and our community members. And in the end, we didn't have an approved budget in the hands of our schools until after school had started. Um, this caused us to lose a few talented teachers uh, and to delay necessary planning. And I want to make it clear at this point that I'm not in favor of raising taxes, and I certainly think that there are areas where revenues could be saved, and I look forward to digging into the budget and exploring these areas. But by allowing the issue of our school budget to become the focus of our community's frustration around high taxes, I feel that we're becoming distracted from the real and important goals that face us which is how to, best, how to be the best school system that we can be with the resources that we can afford. Um, personally, as someone who is in all three schools, I think that our schools are doing a pretty good job managing the resources we've been able to provide them. Um, could we do better? Of course we can. Um, and can we do it without a huge financial investment? I think we can. And while we need more communication and better accountability and a higher degree of transparency. What we really need is innovative and re resourceful thinking around education. Uh, we can increase volunteerism. We can look for alternative funding to support the work we're doing. I think we need to build community consensus around what excellent education is um, through task force, um, through getting the community involved in the schools, maybe lecture series. Um, we need to explore all town spending the way that we've scrutinized the school budget. And we can support work that's already underway to save dollars. Um, our energy um, task force is one way. Uh, so I will say, um, in closing, I think it will take creativity and ingenuity to protect and sustain the education system that many of you in this room have helped build. Um, and I would be honored to be part of building a stronger school community by serving on um, the school board. Thank you very much. My name is Fred Sturdivant. I'm a lifelong Maine resident, though not a lifelong Cape resident. I've lived in Cape for 20 years. Uh, Live here with my partner of 22 years and our 11-year-old son, who is a sixth grader at Cape Middle School. Um, my experience with the um, school systems has been somewhat of, of I don't want to say a mixed bag, but I think there's, there may be some inconsistencies or irregularities in the, the process from beginning to end. And certainly, I'm not at the end of it yet. He's only in sixth grade. But I've seen instances where one year seems to go better than another year from not only a curriculum perspective, but even a personnel perspective. And I think that one of the things I would like to see to, to happen, and one of the reasons I'm, I'm running for school board, is to, to try to create that comprehensive you know, start to finish um, for students so that it isn't a disjointed experience for the 13 years they're in the Cape school system. I think that is something that has, um, is really, it needs to be addressed. I think we need, I, and it's going to be tough with the fact that there is no curriculum director now, so uh, I think that that means that there's going to be even much more of a, an emphasis for others to t take that role. But I think there are people out there that, you know, including myself, that are, are willing to step up and do that. My background, um, let's, I went to Morse High School in Bath, which the first time I came to Cape High School was as a 11th grader for the One Act Festivals. The states were held here and we lost dramatically. Cape killed us. <laughs> We weren't used to the stage. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in information technology from Southern New Hampshire University. I'm currently pursuing uh, an MBA at Southern New Hampshire University. Um, definitely got an interest in education, so that's why I'm still doing it at my age, still keeping at it. Um, one of the things that um, I talked about when um, I was asked questions for the Courier was things that I wanted to see how the, the budget process could be streamlined. One of the things that I think Though we need to keep the budget process and that we need to, to go through a cyclical process, I think there are definitely ways to speed it up. And, and a couple of my 
my uh, opponents here have already talked about, you know, nine months was perhaps a little too long for the budget process here this year. I think some of that were it was constraints put on the town just by the by the state um, and the um, legislation that was passed. Um, but what I would like to also see is is communication increase. I think one of the things that happens is, as a community member, unless someone like myself chooses to actually become involved in the budget process, we don't. It's it seems almost too difficult. There's there's a, 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 a lot of information thrown at us, and if we want to actually to, to get into to, to finding out what's going on, we really need to spend a lot of time do, doing the research. And I think it becomes tough for people that are busy to do that. And one of the things I'd like to see, and one of the things I'm going to step up and, and do, is to create a means for simple communications, you know, maybe just something on the web page where it's actually, you know, a, a parent, a community member can spend 10 minutes in a week and at least get highlights of what's going on with the budget, with the school system, and so that they at least feel that they've got some information. It may not be the detail to which we'd all like them to have, but we all know that, that people are very busy and it's not going to be that they're going to spend two or three hours a day learning what they need to learn. They're going to, they need 10 or 15 minutes to just get that, you know, as lots of people call it, the drive-by, you know, reading of what's going on. Um, I know that, that we, we, we've all sort of talked about and will continue to talk about how we want to be sure that the quality of our school system stays um, as high as it is. I think that is going to be a real challenge given current economic times and as, as many have proposed we're actually in the, at the beginning of or already in a recession. I think budget increases are going to be a tough pill to swallow. I think there will just need to be um, a real onus put on why those budget increases need to happen and that perhaps a, a lot more in-depth look at programs and what what ways we can find you know even if it's you know little pieces we can we can take out of the budget to to make up for some of those increases to try to keep those increases to a minimum because I really think that it's going to be a, a, a tough pill to swallow to have a five point six or a five point three or a five point anything increase for the next school year budget I think um, given the economic times, that may be a real hard thing to, to happen. So the reasons I'm running, I think I've, I've kind of covered that. I really, I haven't been all that involved in the school system at this point other than volunteering and coaching and I thought it was, it was time for me to actually take a, a much more active role. I've thought about running for the school board several times and decided this year was the year. Thanks. I get to be last. Um, hi, I'm Kathy Ray, and I'm a lifelong resident of Cape Elizabeth. I graduated from Cape Schools as well as my husband. Um, I've been married 29 years. I have a 16-year-old daughter who is currently in the high school. I have a BA in communications. I've been on the school board for five years. Um, I think I'm the longest member at this point. I'm not sure that's that's a good spot. But anyway, um, I've been chair of the personnel committee, I've been chair of the finance committee, and I've been the board chair for the last two years. I have a background in banking, management, and recruiting, and I consider myself a fiscally responsible person. Um, being on the board, I've enjoyed working with a diverse group of people, and for those who don't understand how the board works, it's a group of seven people from varied backgrounds, and I feel that we make decisions based on several different opinions, um, information that we receive from the superintendent, staff, um, voters, uh, a varied group of people. And hopefully when we make a decision, we make a decision based on um, a variety of information. I've been on um, a few boards. Um, I'm currently a member of the South Portland Cape Elizabeth Rotary Club. Uh, I'm on the board of the Iris Network. I've been on the SMCC Advisory Council and the United Way Allocations Committee. Um, I guess I enjoy um, community service. I'm running for another term on the school board because I have a strong and continued interest in the Cape Elizabeth school system. Cape Elizabeth had an excellent school system when I attended and graduated and I want that same excellence to continue for our students today. Thank you. Great. Well, um, I think that you all touched on this a little bit um, during your introductions, but our first question um, is wondering, what are your priorities during the next term of the school board? How do you plan to improve the school systems? What changes would you like to make? What specifically would you like to accomplish during a term in the school board? We're going to start with you, Ms. Winker. 
So you asked about priorities, yeah. changes, well, and exactly. What would you like to get? What would you like to accomplish during your, the next term of the school board? Hmm. That's a good question to answer. Well, as far, far as priorities is concerned, definitely budget is the first thing that comes to mind. I truly believe this is going to be the toughest year that the school board, as far as and citizens of Cape Elizabeth, are going to have to face. Um, obviously, we have an excellent school system. I'm on the school board because I want to make sure that we maintain the excellence uh, that we offer in programs and services. Um, I do know that we are going to have to look at the way we do our budgets, um, some, some of the mandates, which may change, hopefully, um, might give us a little more room and balance as far as how we actually go through the budget process. Um, I do believe that we need to have more transparency going forward with all of our citizens so that they understand exactly how their tax dollars are being spent. None of us want to see our taxes go up. We're all in tough economic times. However, uh, we do need to continue to support our school systems. And this isn't just for the teachers, the programs, um, the athletics, and all of that. We also have to maintain our infrastructure. I mean, we do have very expensive buildings to maintain. We have our energy costs that we have to keep up with. We do have our food costs that we have to keep up with. We can't keep putting a lot more burden back on the individual parents of the students that, that are in the schools. Um, the parents at this point do pick up a lot of that, so probably my biggest priority. Thank you. Thanks, um, I think one of the things I'd like to see first is for us as a community to build a consensus around what we think excellent education really is. Um, I think given the divisiveness that we've seen in the budget process, it makes sense to call a community task force together and do some educating um, of the community on what the schools face as far as challenges. Um, I would like to see transparency around the budget better communication to our residents about the budget. Uh, I think there are lots of ways to do that, including, as Fred mentioned, um, a website uh, an, that's updated uh, periodically. I think we need to open our doors to community members to see what their tax dollars are really doing, um, whether it's through a series of lectures or coffees. I think people need to understand that their tax dollars are hard at work. Um, as far as individual improvements, I'd like to see um, our district finish the curriculum work that it started. Unfortunately, we do not have the district um, curriculum coordinator position anymore. Uh, and that instruction assessment will be necessary for teachers and administrators in moving, for, in moving forward um, to provide a scaffolding to our teachers so they know what needs to be covered. I'd also like to see us um, invest in technology. And I think we can do this without investing a lot of money. I think we need to look at grants. We need to look at the possibility of becoming a pilot program. But technology is the um, medium of learning now. And so we need to be prepared for that. Um, and I'd like to see us build a stronger volunteer program to support our schools. Priorities. I expected that to be one of the questions. Um, I hinted at a couple of my priorities in my introduction. Uh, one of the priorities that I see is, is quite important is, and I'm sure we'll all say it, is a comprehensive K through 12 curriculum. I, I think that we have some excellent teachers, we have excellent schools. I think what we don't necessarily have is a cohesive unit in that, in our school system. We don't have that beginning to end that I would like to see. Uh, I think that's, it's, it's something that's not necessarily easily fixed, but I don't, it's, it's easier than other things. It's certainly easier than how are we going to pay for, well, fuel that was $4 a gallon, which fortunately has now dropped to under $3 a gallon, so we're getting closer on that one. Uh, another thing I would like to do is to see 
every program within the school system is examined for its merits. That's not to say that there are some that, that don't have merits, but, but that each needs to be examined. And it's not simply a matter of deciding, OK, we don't need this program. Why don't we need it? If we think we don't need it, is, is it because it's not successful? Is it, if it, is it not successful because there's not been enough investment in it, and that perhaps it could be successful if the correct resources were allocated to it? I don't think that. Um, cutting a budget is as simple as just saying what's working, what's not working. There may be other reasons why particular programs aren't working the way we'd want them to. And there may be others that are working just fine that maybe could work just fine with a little less money allocated toward them. So I would, I would want to see each program truly evaluated for its merits and for its needs and for anticipated needs as well. Uh, I'll say it again. Um, in, enhanced communication, I, I hinted at that in my introduction. I would like to make the budget process more, I hate to use the overused word, transparent, but easier for community members to, to take part in without having to do a lot of reading and having to spend a lot of time doing that. So those are my highest priorities. Next. <laughs> um, my priorities would also be around the budget as well um, with some others and I'll touch on those. Um, last year's budget was an interesting process. It's the first time we had a budget like that where the budget went to the voters. And what was going on behind the scenes um, that folks couldn't understand or see was um, um, demands from the state on how we would do things that were happening on a regular basis. Um, and that was confusing to us, and I think that confusion probably went out to the voters as well. So I'm hoping that this year's budget process, now that we have one under our belt where we take it out to the voters, they have another chance to, we've learned some of, from some of our mistakes and we can do it a little bit better this year and um, communicate a little more clearly. Because it's important to me that the voters feel that they are well informed about the budget when they go to vote. And if they're not, then somehow we have dropped the ball. Um, one of the other priorities, uh, some of the other shorter priorities, I guess, is I want to um, continue uh, working on the job descriptions that we've put in place. We have most of them done, but I want to see us finish the rest of them. Uh, performance appraisals, we've made um, huge headway, head, headway excuse me, on those, but um, we have more work to do. Um, policies. We work on policies all the time, and sometimes that can be a little bit um, monotonous, but I want to make sure that the policies we have are appropriate and um, enforceable. And um, again, uh, like what Fred said, I'd like to continuation of the evaluation of our programs. Keep the ones that are working, get rid of the ones that aren't, and reevaluate the ones in between. Thank you. Mr. Samyashkin. <coughs> Well, obviously, the, the budget is a priority, but, <clears throat> but not necessarily in the sense that we need to fix the budget in terms of the spending. I think the process didn't work really well for a variety of reasons, <clears throat> and we need to address it. It has to be more transparent, more effective. It cannot be incremental, just slapping dollars on top of what happened before. Programs have to be evaluated, and we have to do all these things and involve our community. However, I think the school board cannot focus just on the budget. It still goes back to the, what's an appropriate education, which will drive really then how much we should spend. I think we need benchmarks, benchmarks that are acceptable to everybody, objective benchmarks against similar school systems, that we can say, okay, this is what you need. And these benchmarks then can be used to further validate the curriculum work. I mean, we need to finish curriculum work, strengthen and make it more integrated. But also the question is, what are we shooting with this curriculum? What kind of, what kind of results we want to achieve? So I think it's important to have the benchmarks in place to measure our progress, which then speaks to accountability. Who is responsible for these results? What do we do when the results are not achieved? All of these things have to be answered. And again, we have to make sure that this curriculum and benchmarks apply to all students, because obviously we have different students with different interests, and we have to make sure that our curriculum doesn't just focus on one group of students, not another. Everybody should be challenged appropriately. Finally, on a few other notes, I would say I would be interested in increasing the strength of a student government, seeing as more of a self-government for students, and also sports. I would like to see more informal intramural sports. The varsity sports are plentiful, but I think I would like to see our children be more involved in less formal sport activities. Great, thanks. 
Um, our next question touches on the budget, which is clearly a very important issue with the school. In light of the conflict between rising school budgets and the high tax burden for residents, are you now willing to reconsider school consolidation for Cape Elizabeth? If not, how do we maintain excellence in the Cape Elizabeth school system while keeping our budget under control? This question is about you, Ms. Stenson. Um, that's a good question. I would I have to say I'm not in favor of consolidating school systems per se. I'm um, in favor of consolidating as many services as we can. Um, if we can consolidate and bundle fuel costs, that would be one way to try and save money. Um, can we do collective bargaining for health care benefits for our employees? That would be something that I would look at. Um, uh, I think I think in that regard, I would look at consolidation of services, but not consolidation of the school, per se. Next to you, Mr. Stradivin. Do I favor school consolidation for Cape Elizabeth? Absolutely not. I think we were um, fortunate that it was not something we had to do. I'm, I'm very happy with that, and I, I, would, I would urge Cape Elizabeth not to, to consolidate, not necessarily um, for any reason other than I think, I think we do just fine on our own. Um, I think we do have challenges and we will continue to have financial challenges. Uh, this isn't the first time there have been financial challenges. I think we are in a particular, particularly um, erratic time economically, um, but I think we, with the correct um, vision on the budget and, and where things can, where money can be saved. Um, Mary sort of hinted at some sort of cooperatives on, on certain um, costs that need to be allocated. I think there are ways perhaps we can do that. I think the, the fuel spending I think is a great, um, a great example. I, I saw a story in the news um, about, this was a town up, I think it was in Jefferson, where this, um, this neighborhood basically formed their own cooperative for fuel pricing and was able to actually get a, a much lower price. I think maybe there's something like that that perhaps could be done, that if we could work with, with neighboring communities to do things like that. But as far as consolidating from an administrative perspective, I'm, I'm definitely not in favor of that. Um, school consolidation, interesting subject. Um, I spent a day in Augusta last year on school consolidation. Um, it was very interesting to listen to all the schools um, who came and discussed it. The idea behind the consolidation, which was first uh, brought forward by the governor and then by the um, uh, DOE, um, their idea was to save money. The proposal did not save money. Um, if you looked at any of the pieces below what the um, sales pitch was that you saw on TV, it did not save money. Should it be good for Cape Elizabeth? No. If we looked at consolidating, we would consolidate with a nearby town that would either be Scarborough or South Portland. This would not be beneficial to Cape Elizabeth. Um, Cape Elizabeth is a high-performing school. We would consolidate with a very large school. We would not cut administration. We would add to it. Um, and we um, are below the administrative cost. And and that is why we did not have to consolidate. We were one of six uh, school systems in the state that were high performing and highly efficient. We had less than 4% administration cost. I think it was 3.2. So um, no, I would not suggest that Cape Elizabeth consolidate. It would be not beneficial to the students and it would not be beneficial to the taxpayers. Mr. Samichi? Yes. <clears throat> uh, when the consolidation was proposed, uh, there was a lot of talk about improved uh, educational results, but really the whole consolidation program was nothing else but trying to reduce costs, basically, and basically the education was not really a consideration. So from my perspective, we have very little to gain in terms of education, for sure, and I'm against consolidation. This said, I agree that some, some services can be definitely shared, some of the purchasing power can be leveraged by, organ by buying, creating basically, uh, buying um, uh, groups with other school systems. Also, I think there are some programs that can be done well with other school systems. For example, some of the advanced courses 
that we cannot offer because we don't have enough students interested in some exotic advanced topic, maybe can be offered with other schools that have similar interests. Maybe programs like ESL who have relatively few students studying English as second language and there are other schools in our neighborhood that have a lot of students like that. I don't know some of the logistical issues which I think also had, it's called consolidation program had, uh, but I, I would say it's worth investigating. Also, I think in terms of follow through, when we were talking about consolidation two years ago, uh, I think there were statements made that will look into cooperating with our school systems. I'm unaware today of anything that happened to that effect. So my question is, you know, what prevents us from really moving forward with exploring benefits of collaborating, but definitely not consolidating with our neighborhood school systems? On the question of school consolidation, no. Obviously, I'm not in favor of it, as just about everybody here has pointed out. Cape Elizabeth would end up losing more than they'd be gaining. It's not going to save us on money. It's not going to save us on the quality of education that we're currently offering our students um, as far as collaboration or cooperatives with other towns, possibly. But again, we're going to run into um, problems with trying to arrange students to go to other, other campuses um, if we were to try any kind of cooperative effort as far as programs are concerned. Uh, bulk purchasing naturally could provide us with some savings, but again, trying to coordinate efforts uh, among school systems offers its own difficulties and sometimes could actually end up costing us more. We have looked at some of these things. We are taking a lot of measures through the energy um, committee that's been formed to see where we can save some money on things within our own school system. And I think that would be a much more, uh, it would be much better for us to concentrate our efforts in areas that we can control because it is our tax dollars that we're spending. And the more control we take over on our tax dollars, the better off I think we'll all be. Um, you as members of the school board make really important decisions about what the school will, um, what programs will remain at the school and um, what types of things the school will spend its money on. How do you plan on communicating these ideas with the students at the school? Um, this question will start with you, Mr. Sotera. That's actually a great question. We've, we've, we've spent so far this evening talking about taxpayers and, and community members. Um, We've maybe forgotten that we have some community members that though they may not vote yet because they're not old enough, certainly um, have an active role in, in the school system because they're doing it every day. Uh, I think some of the, the ideas I've talked about, which is um, you know putting some some uh, information on web pages, um, maybe we make a Facebook page, maybe that would get you all interested. <laughs> um, I think getting getting again and and particularly students are. Um, probably even more busy sometimes than their parents, um, making it so that it is easy enough for them to do it and it's quick enough that they're not having to spend hours reading, you know, boring budget information when really what they want is, you know, is just a couple of uh, highlights on what's going on and how it's going to affect them, what programs are being examined and, and, and why and what possible um, cuts or increases are being proposed. So again, I think it is keeping it quick enough, easy enough for, for students to, to have access to and yet still provide information that is meaningful to them. Um, last year we started a new program where we have two um, school board representatives from the high school on the school board. Um, they're not voting members because they're not voted in by the townspeople, but they sit on the school board. They attend um, meetings. Um, we try to get them on different uh, subcommittees. And this year we have another two. Um, we have learned uh, what we did well last year and one of the things we try to have these students do is to communicate with the student body to give us feedback on what they hear from the students what they think is going well what they don't think is going well things that we don't necessarily even hear about um, and I think it's been very successful and I think it can be more successful um, we've had them doing some polling um, communication and, and I think that we can make uh, better use of their time. We're trying to do that and we're trying to get some feedback. We've got some um, great uh, students this year and they've been uh, very verbal, which is, 
good because they're giving us feedback and they're not afraid to tell us if they don't agree and um, that's what we want to hear. So uh, hopefully we're making some progress there. We're always interested if students have something else to say to us, um, whether they want to go see it um, through the website. We sometimes get emails through the website um, or in any other way that they want to communicate. So, but if people have ideas on how that might be done better, we'd like to hear them. Thanks. Mr. Jamie Eskin. Yes. Um, well, clearly one of my priorities was to increase the strength of student government and self-government. So I think it's great that students participate already in discussion of a school board. And I would like to have as much as possible direct input from the students, whole student body. Again, I think the problem is that the, the school is quite fragmented as far as I remember from my, what I heard from my kids. And the input isn't perfect. So I would like actually to have all students have an opportunity to input, whether it's for evaluation of the curriculums, courses, uh, providing feedback on what they think is missing from school or they should be added or changed. And I would like to do it on a periodic basis and have all students involved so we have really representative view as opposed to, you know, kind of informal survey. Uh, also, I think that when we talk about benchmarking and changes in the curriculum, I think I, w I, w I would think that the students should participate in this kind of discussion, especially on a high school. Again, I, it's different. Obviously, you cannot we cannot involve students at all levels in all the discussions. Nevertheless, I think there is a room there for, for some kind of give and take and trying to understand some of the concerns students might have and also some of the objectives that the school board has. So I would say definitely more interaction, more communication, and uh, more, um, f more formal input that would involve more students. Well, as Kathy's already mentioned, we do have two student members on the school board. They do attend all of our workshops, all of our meetings, as well as they are invited to be participants in any of our subcommittee meetings, as are any of the students always welcome to attend any of the committee meetings. We have a pretty good electronic system set up. All of us are available through email. Any, if there are any topics um, that the students would like to be brought forward, any of us as school board members are more than welcome to entertain any of those topics of discussion. If there are specific concerns by the student body, we would really like to hear those. As far as the students interacting with current issues that we're discussing, we do put all of our agendas out on the website so that everybody can see, the general public, students, everybody. Um, and we would like to see, hear more feedback from the students. The representatives we have this year are doing an excellent job. Um, I, they are very vocal during our meetings. It's wonderful to hear their comments because it does give us a different perspective how what some of the decisions we're making are affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're hoping that that will continue. Again, we would love to hear from the student body. Possibly they don't agree with um, the student representatives. So as, as citizens of Cape Elizabeth, voting or non-voting, you still have a voice with a lot of us here. Um, I love your question because to me, um it really represents uh, what happened in the budget process last year. We saw so many students come out to speak about the schools and to support um, programs that were on the chopping block. And to me, that was a, a good indication that our education system was working. And there were so many articulate students talking about what this system brought to their lives and brought to their families and they spoke of protecting um, the system. And I think that made a big difference and really um, gave the community insight into our student body population. Um, how to stay in touch with you? Um, I don't want to say I don't have a clue because I would say email and people roll their eyes when, <laughs> when I say email because it is Facebook now and who knows what it will be in a year. Um, I would look at using Facebook. Um, I, you know, your teachers will probably be alerted as well to changes. Uh, your student reps are great. Um, I've watched them in action. Uh, they would be great um, point people for you. 
Um, I also think we should have a school board per point person for students, and maybe the school board point person should attend the, um, the student council meetings to keep you informed. Uh, but you are the education system at work, and so I'd really like to see us stay in touch and to keep um, that line of communication open. Unfortunately, we're just about out of time, so we're um, allowing a two-minute closing from each of the candidates. Um, Ms. Ray, you can start. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ted Jordan and his AP government class for hosting this and attending. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Superintendent Alan Hawkins, the school administration and staff, the school board, town manager Mike McGovern, the town staff and town council, and last but not least, the voters and taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth. I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm always available. Um, my email address is on the web uh, through the school system. My phone number is and address is there as well. Um, one of the things that was touched on and I think is important is um, the dates of school, meeting, school board meetings are on the website. The agendas are on the websites. The minutes are on the websites. And anybody and everybody is welcome to come to any meeting. Um, I would like to see more people attend school board meetings. Uh, maybe the town council feels the same way, but we'll come to a school board meeting and I'll look up and there'll be no one here from the public. Now maybe that's because they're all at home watching us on Channel 3, but I'm not <laughs> sure that that's the case. So um, I welcome everybody and anybody to be involved. Um, I always am interested in people's ideas and thoughts. Um, we don't pretend that we have all the answers. Uh, and I think the more informed we are and the more people we hear from, the better ideas we have. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you everybody, just to short in this part, for, for organizing it. And um, a few remarks. I, mean, I think that I definitely, I, I would bring to the school board ample professional skills, financial management, organizational design, uh, group process. So from pro professional perspective, I have a lot of skills. I do not have skills uh, related to this particular school board. I have not been part of it, so I cannot say that I know exactly how it works. Uh, but what I have is ability to learn. I learn quickly, and I'm interested in learning. So I think that that's very important here. Two years ago, uh, when I was running for the school board, I said, if you are happy with the status quo, do not vote for me. And I lost by 200 <laughs> votes. I got over 2,000 votes. <laughs> So I would like to say the same thing. <laughs> if you like how things are going, and have been going for a while, and they are not going poorly, they are going OK. If you like that, don't vote for me. My interest is in moving things forward, challenging things, changing things. I don't have preconceived notion where budget should be higher or lower, but I do believe that there are opportunities to improve education and create a stronger community through this process and stronger student body. So, again, uh, I would like to consider voting for me, but only if you want a change for better. Again, not a, not a revolution, but an evolution at a higher rate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's a tough act to follow now. <laughs> Well, first, I'd like to s start by thanking everybody involved here and offering us all the opportunity to come out and get a chance to express our viewpoints. I'd also like to express my gratitude after serving for the last three years to my fellow school board members, to Superintendent Alan Hawkins, the district leadership team, the teachers, the staff, community services, and also all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. I believe all of us do share a common goal here, and that's to make sure that the Cape Elizabeth School District continues to provide the best educational services and programs to every student in our community. And I find myself fortunate to live in this community that produces a tremendous number of dedicated citizens who give of their time and their talents to keep our town such a de desirable place to live. And I'd also like to urge all of you to get out and vote on November 4th. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Ted Jordan and um, Caitlin as the moderator and um, everyone who came here tonight and everyone who is watching. 
Um, good public schools, I think, are a gift from this generation to the next, and we've been called upon to assure that the children in this town are getting the best education that we as residents can reasonably afford to give them. Now, some would suggest that we've reached a crossroads in what's affordable and what's reasonable. I assure you that I am open to looking um, at all of the cost efficiencies and possibly even shifting the paradigm and the assumptions that exist around education in our community. But while budget and cost efficiency are an important concern, as a school board member, the primary goal should be preparing our students to be successful in a global economy. Um, as a community, I don't feel that we can continue arguments around um, or continued arguments about cost and let those drive the debate around education because education is so much more. It diminishes us to do so. And this system, I assure you, is not wholly broken, nor is it wholly perfect. We have checks and balances in place, that's the good news, that will assure you that your tax dollars are not being frivolously spent. We have the town council, which can look at the, the budget, and in the end, that you as the voters have the opportunity to accept or reject the budget. Because of this town's commitment and the commitment of many people in this room, CAPE has historically had the top schools in the state and even in the nation. And I think we have to get behind the principle of hope for something better and work towards it, especially in times of economic uncertainty. There is so much that can be done and much of it without public funds, but with public brain power and a sense of optimism. And I'd like to use my skills to bring these ideals to fruition. Thank you. Well, uh, everyone's thanked everyone, but I'll, I guess I could repeat at least one of them. I'd like to thank Mr. Jordan for inviting us tonight, as well as AP government students that are here tonight. Um, let's just say that as a school board member, I will bring a fresh perspective to the school system, or to the school board, excuse me, um, an open mind and a willingness and excitement to learn. Um, as Piotr said, he's not necessarily the, um, the most um, savvy as far as the school board goes. I'm not either. But I, I'm not sure that that's a detriment. I think that might actually be a good thing. I think that, that bringing that fresh perspective and the open-mindedness may be just what we need at this point in time. Um, I do have a vested interest in the schools here, being that I have a sixth grader who I want to see become a successful adult. Um, I also have a vested interest in the financial stability of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, and I think both of those are important items to consider. So thank you for your time. I'd just like to thank all of the candidates for coming here tonight and speaking. Um, and now we're going to switch over to the candidates for town council. Thank you. Thank you. Kate.
Okay. Um, we're going to move on to the town council now. Um, running for town council, we have uh, Evan Lovata, um, Mark Zykowski, Ann Swift Kayata, and Peter Sherman. Uh, Peter's my brother. I'm David Sherman. I'm David Sherman. I'm sorry. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> my older brother continues to haunt me, but that's all right. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with a five-minute opening for uh, each candidate. Um, Mr. Lovato, you're first. How exciting. I get to go before the Pats play Denver. Uh, thank you very much. I want to uh, especially thank Ted Jordan uh, for organizing this. Uh, I personally know Ted. I was a, uh, st a student uh, teacher with Ted Jordan about six or seven years ago. I went back to school for three years to become a uh, certified teacher, social studies teacher in the state of Maine, and I did my student teaching at Cape Elizabeth High School, and Ted was my mentor. I ended up teaching, uh, at both, teaching and coaching both in the middle school and the high school at Cape Elizabeth, and I think there I have a lot of insight that I can offer to the uh, town council about how the school is actually uh, really run from the inside. I have some great in-depth personal uh, insight into how things really operate, how the school, uh, uh, the bureaucracy, the layers of bureaucracy operate, how the great teachers uh, really influence the students, how the not so great teachers don't influence the students, how uh, Anyway, let me, uh, let me start by saying uh, I think David, Anne, and Mark are all wonderful, qualified people. And I know David and, and Anne personally for many years. And uh, this is a thankless job trying to be on the town council, uh, especially in this tough community of Cape Elizabeth. But uh, one thing that I, that I think differentiates me from the others is that uh, I am uh, a Cape Elizabethan from the age of 10. I've spent 45 years in this town. I do have roots in this town. Uh, we moved here in 1963. Uh, I played Little League Baseball here. I played at what is now Playstead Park. I also raked Harris Playstead's leaves and uh, cleaned his swimming pool. Uh, we won the state championship when I was 12 years old in 1965. I also coached the uh, state championship Little League team in 1999 when my son was 11 years old. So I have spent an awful lot of time in this community. I love this town. That's why I want to run. Uh, my sister uh, was Miss Maine in 1967 representing Cape Elizabeth. My mother was a longtime school teacher, a bit of a crazy French teacher at the Cape Elizabeth High School for close to 20 years. Uh, she gave her life to this community. The students were ecstatic about her or they hated her. There was no uh, if, ands, or buts. I learned from both of my parents to call a spade a spade, be open, be honest. And that is one thing that I will bring to the town council if I am elected. I will bring honesty and openness. And I will ask questions. The uh, my father, in 1969, started Lovata Securities. He had been in the insurance business for 25 years and was being railroaded, railroaded out of his job. He started uh, the securities business in 1969 without knowing a heck of a lot about the securities industry. But uh, he grew that, went through 1974, which I was a junior in college at that time. And it reminds me an awful lot of what's going on right now. Uh, I graduated from Cornell University in 1976 with a uh, BA in government. I think it's some of the skills that I learned at Cornell I can uh, use to uh, try to uh, help the town government here. Uh, I went to work uh, in the family business, Lovato Securities, in about 1979, 1980, and worked for about 23 years in the uh, securities business. I helped grow our business. Uh, to one of the largest independent brokerage firms in the state. We had about 40 employees, dealt with an awful lot of uh, trying issues on how we're going to compete with the big major firms throughout the country. Uh, but once again, through uh, hard work, through being open and honest with people, uh, 
it looks like I only have 30 seconds to tell my life story, and I just started. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, looks like I'll have to uh, take out a couple full-page ads in the Cape Courier to promote uh, the rest of uh, my wonderfulness. And uh, uh, I have, what I want to do is take a, a good, hard look at all the issues facing our town. Uh, you know, we, we have a budget of $30 million. And I think we can go line by line and we can find ways that we can keep this community the greatest place in the world to live. And I hope to spend the next 45 years of my life in this great community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Zukowski. I don't claim to be as funny as Evan, and I'm certainly not a lifelong Cape Elizabeth resident. Uh, many of you don't know me, and I'd like to change that. Uh, I moved here in 1999 with my family from Boston. Uh, I've been married to my wife, Michelle, for 11 wonderful years, and I have two kids in the schools. Katie is nine in fourth grade, and my son Dan is six in first grade. They're both at Pond Cove. I'm pretty sure my family wants me to run for town council to keep me out of the house as much as possible, and they enjoy public humiliation and scorn. Um, but I, I, unlike um, Evan, and I think unlike a lot of my, my um, running mates, I'm not from here. I look at that as an advantage in some ways, in that I've lived in multiple places throughout my life. Many of the stops were as a child when my dad was a teacher and a professor. The other stops were for my education. I grew up in Florida. Um, I never thought I'd live in Maine in a million years. Uh, I graduated from the University of Florida in 1989, uh, which seems like a million years ago. Uh, I then went to dental school at UCLA on the other side of the country to escape humidity, but I found smog and riots. Uh, I finished my dental degree in 1993 and then moved to Boston, uh, where I finished medical school at Harvard in 1996. And finally, uh, realizing that I was overeducated and underfunded, uh, went to work in 1999 as an oral and maxillofacial surgeon here in South Portland with Dr. Moyer, who also lives in Cape. The things that I'd like to bring to the town council are, are many fold. I think that. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, the town has become a little too divisive. I believe that as a small business owner, uh, I have a fair amount of experience in looking at budgets, in managing a large staff, and in dealing with people who may have diametrically opposed views to what I believe in. I've served on a number of national committees for both medical and dental associations, as well as organizations like the Joint Commission that, that accredit national hospitals and healthcare agencies. And I just finished uh, my term as the president of the Maine Dental Association, which was full of public scorn and humiliation, so I should be ready for that. Um, the bottom line is I've taken a lot of those experiences in boards, committees, and in leadership roles, and I really feel that I've learned how to see both sides of an issue, not only from the side that I've taken, but more importantly, from the other person's shoes. I think it's important for all of us to realize that we may have differences of opinion, but it's absolutely reasonable to disagree as long as we don't make it personal. One of the key things that I'd like to bring is a consensus building to the town council and the school board and try to work through liaisons on both organizations to work with each other and improve communication and the key word tonight apparently of transparency. Um, one of the things that most people when they meet me will say, they may not know me, uh, I'm certainly not uh, a GQ cover model, I may not be the most intelligent person, after all I'm a mechanic. I fix people's faces. But I am incredibly honest. I will never tell people something to have a vote. I will never tell you something to make you happy and walk away with a smile and do the exact opposite because what you see is absolutely what you get. I have a number of priorities with the town council. First and foremost, and I won't be shy about it, is supporting our school budget. I honestly believe that our, that our schools have been cored down to the bare bones and I think we are really sacrificing our future as well as our property values, the way we've been funding our schools for the past five years. There are people that will say they'll support the schools and they'll support the budget, and that's fine, but we have to put our money where our mouths are. Part of that also involves looking at our comprehensive plan that is very well laid out, but needs to be boiled down and needs to be converted into more of a strategic plan like we see in a business like my own. We list out our priorities, one through 10, and we rank them. We then have measurable goals, much like we do in the comprehensive plan, and we have a time certain date to meet those goals. And most importantly, the thing that's missing from our comprehensive plan is we link it to the budget. 
we take our priorities and we link them to the budget to fund our priorities. And it's reviewed on an annual basis. It's a living document and it really is a transparent guide for the entire town to follow. It looks like I'm running short on time. I do have some other ideas that we'll get into in a bit. But in short, I'm not shy about what I believe in. I do believe that we can balance the needs for a well-funded school and I believe we can also find cost savings in the current municipal budget and other areas. And I believe we can also be creative in generating revenue to lessen the tax burden, along with reasonable residential and commercial development of our town center. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ann Swift Kayata. Uh, I was not Miss Cape Elizabeth, but I have been a town councilor for a while. And I've gained a lot from this community. My family and I have received much from this town over the years, especially from the many volunteers, the public servants, and the taxpayers who built this community. I have tried my best to give back to this town that has given us so much. I've served as chair of the trustees of Thomas Memorial Library, as president of the Middle School Parents Association, as a classroom volunteer, as treasurer of Project Graduation, and as a member of the local Rotary Club. On all these volunteer boards and committees, and then as a town councillor for the past nine years, I've met and listened to citizens from every corner of our town on every issue imaginable. And there's some pretty strange issues sometimes, too. I have learned how crucial public services are to those who need them. Our rescue paramedics, our police, our firefighters, our recycling center, the library, the plowing and the paving and the maintenance of our roads, and the education of our children. I have learned also how substantial and difficult the burden of taxes can be for many of our residents. Many senior citizens want to give back to this town, too. They want to support the education of our next generation. At the same time, however, they are concerned that their ability to remain in town is jeopardized by rising property taxes. The challenge is to make sure that we are efficient, fair, and prudent in the stewardship of our resources. As many of you know, I have a substantial background and education in business. In my years on the council, I have used that experience to do the hard work that is necessary if we are to continue to find ways to do more with less. The coming year will bring unprecedented challenges for the council. Meeting those challenges will require an acknowledgement of the reality that resources will be limited. The weakening economy will likely reduce the amount of money we receive from the state to help pay for our schools. New car sales that provide excise tax revenue are already down. We will have no choice but to make tough decisions requiring careful thought and balance. I offer no pat solutions because there are none. Instead, I offer a proven record of prudence and balance in the stewardship of our remarkable resources. I have defended and will continue to defend our school system against state efforts to mandate unjustified reductions in funding or forced merging with neighboring systems. At the same time, I've kept my word to restrain those spending increases that are not justified by either inflation or growth in demand for town services. The subject of school spending is always important in this town. School spending accounts for 71% of our property taxes. The average homeowner in Cape Elizabeth pays more taxes than does the average homeowner in comparable surrounding towns. At the same time, though, we spend less per student than do many of these same communities. This dilemma exists because the state aid to education formula returns proportionally few tax dollars to Cape Elizabeth and because we also have little commercial tax base to lessen our residential tax burden. As a result, those who say we should spend more on our schools have a case and those who say we are taxed too much also have a case. I have tried to steer a middle course and will continue to do so. Let me say just a bit more about school spending and taxes. Several other candidates here this evening propose to increase school spending even faster than we have in recent years, even as enrollment falls further. I understand why they want to do this. 
I have always supported strengthening our excellent school system. However, the cold hard fact this year is that even keeping school spending at current levels will itself require a tax increase because of the likely falling revenues I've already described. To add the increased school spending that some candidates here or on the school board propose could result in a 7 to 10 percent tax increase in the middle of a recession. I cannot support that. Too many people in town are hurting. There's no doubt, no doubt at all, that the coming year will be challenging. It's a challenge that we will share as a community. We will need to identify and balance priorities. It's important that we do so in a civil and thoughtful manner. And we must always ask ourselves, what is best for the town as a whole? I'm certain we can do this. So I look forward to the discussion tonight as we work together to share our concerns, to listen to each other, and to move forward while preserving what makes Cape Elizabeth so special. Thank you. David Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you to uh, Ted Jordan and the AP government class for hosting tonight's event. I really do appreciate the opportunity to speak before you here in person and to all the loyal watchers out there in TV land. I'm sure that my three sons are glued to the television set right now, um, at least until the Patriots uh, game commences. Uh, but uh, a lot of folks, when I said that I was going to run for the town council, the, the, the reaction was twofold. One was, oh, I'm so glad you're doing this, and that was very heartening. And then the other reaction was, are you crazy? Uh, why would you ever want to do that? Uh, and I really don't question the sanity of people who serve on the town council. The reason I want to serve on the town council is ultimately I'm an optimist. And I think we as a town council can really do better for our town. The other reason I'm serving, or I want to serve, excuse me, on the town council, and it sounds a bit of a cliche, but I, I have three children who are growing up in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, who I have one in the high school, I have one in the middle school, and I have one in second grade in Pond Cove. So at this point, I'm sort of spanning the gamut of school-aged children, and I honestly feel quite old when I go to those second grade open houses and meet first-time parents with their first child in the school system. But I, I, I really uh, don't want you to believe or feel that I'm just a one-issue candidate. I recognize that there is a need for a balance in our town and our budgets. I recognize that schools should be a priority and must be a priority, but I also recognize that there are competing concerns. Uh, I want to make sure that this town is a better place to live, to raise a family, to educate children, and to eventually retire so that all citizens will feel as if their needs are being met. Um, a primary motivation for running, frankly, is sitting through and observing uh, the, all the talented people who have engaged in the debate over our school budgets for the last three to five years. Uh, I, I alluded to this in my uh, Cape Courier piece. It seems to be sort of the same discussion year after year after year. And I sit here, or, or where you are in the audience or at home on tele watching on, t on TV, and think we have got to do better than this. And it doesn't mean the people involved in the debate are careless. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not talented, that, that they're not working hard. But at the end of the day, we were facing one budget that was proposed by the school board with an approximate 6% increase in spending, and another budget that was adopted or approved by the town council that was about 4.3% of an increase. But the dollar difference between the two wasn't that great of a divide. And I know money is important no matter what the difference, but when we're looking at a couple of hundred thousand dollars in differences between the two budgets, we have got to be able to find common ground, and we should be able to do it more quickly than we did this time around. Um, I recognize that this was a new procedure that the town council and the school board and the town had to engage in with a public vote on the school budget. Uh, but I would like to spend a, a lot of time, if I'm elected, looking at other areas of the municipal budget, other areas where we may be able to realize savings. Uh, we do scrutinize the school budget because it's a large piece of our tax dollars that are being spent. Uh, but we might be able to realize savings on the municipal side. We may also want to re-examine making Fort Williams a self-sufficient operation. That was a goal that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission was asked to look at in 1999. Uh, that led to the establishment of a charitable foundation 
To date, however, the fort still is not self-sustaining, and virtually every voter that I talk to at the transfer station, at the IGA, just through my travels around the town, is very interested in trying to make the fort self-sustaining, or even profitable, so that that money could then be reinvested into the fort to make the capital improvements that are going to be necessary in the coming years. Um, another area that I've emphasized is trying to expand our commercial tax base. We need to be realistic about that. We don't have a huge business district, but I would like to see a more vibrant town center for Cape Elizabeth, not only to bring in more business, but to make it a place where people will go rather than hopping in their cars and going to the main mall or down to the old port or, or somewhere that's going to require more driving. I think Cape Elizabeth would be well served by a vibrant town center. Uh, briefly about me, in case you didn't read the 20 letters to the Cape Courier over the last few editions, I've been in Cape Elizabeth uh, since 78, off and on. My family moved here when I was a teenager. I moved back in 93 with my wife and my firstborn son. My two younger boys are native Mainers. I practice law full time at the law firm of Drum and Woodsum, six years on the planning board, and four years on the education foundation board. I know this town very well, and I would very much appreciate your vote on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you all. Um, our first question, we're going to start with Dr. Zykowski. Looking at the town's comprehensive plan, there are a number of short-term muni uh, municipal goals which will take a major investment to complete. How would you balance these needs against the needs of the school? Well, I, I think I alluded to that earlier, in that the comprehensive plan does a number of really good things. It goes uh, area by area in the town, from municipal needs to open space preservation to schools to quality of life. Every other sub area uh, that you can imagine is on there, and they do have the implemented goals. That's why I would like to see the comprehensive plan converted into more of a strategic plan, like most major organizations and businesses do. What I mean by that is you literally rank your priorities uh, in those areas. Um, let's say that open space is number one in preservation. School budget is number two. Preservation of municipal services is number three, um, including things like the town intersection or the shore road pathway, whatever the will of the voters is on that. And then you fund those priorities appropriately uh, with the budget dollars that you have for the coming year. By doing that, uh, you're able to follow a very clear pathway and a very clear uh, linear progression of what your goals are, how you're going to reach them, and you tie them to the budget process so you don't shortchange your top priorities. Thank you. Well, the 19, I'm sorry, the 2000, I'm in the wrong century, the 2007 comprehensive plan <coughs> identified a number of priorities. Exp among them were expanding open space and accessible trails, encouraging the preservation of working farms, and continuing the current slow pace and pattern of development. I agree with these priorities. I would disagree with Mark that they have not been prioritized. I worked for over two years and 27 meetings. It was a long process on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. And at the end of it, we did prioritize. Uh, we prioritized um, in terms of what the goals were and then the implementation steps under each one. And then the council, when it received it uh, and voted on it and accepted it last year, also approved a plan that uh, indicated which goals should be accomplished in the short term, the medium term, and the long term. So we work those into our town council goals, which are the goals that the council sets for itself and for the town, the priorities that we want to work on. Um, so I would say the priorities have been ranked. As for how to balance them, with uh, everything else that's going on, uh, that's, that's the issue. That's the issue that faces the town council every day. It's all about balancing important but competing needs. And uh, the way we balance them is we scrutinize all the facts, data, and logic, and we listen to the public and determine what their priorities are before we un undertake any major endeavors. And then we move forward with the plans. But there are operating costs that you have to do every year. It's more the specific new initiatives that you have to prioritize, because you can't take on too much at any one time without hurting the schools or municipal services. I, I do think it is an issue of priorities uh, in trying to balance these other goals that are laid out, laid out in the comprehensive plan with the ongoing year-to-year -year needs of our schools. Uh, I found it very interesting in reading through the comprehensive plan 
uh, both in its various iterations and then more recently in trying to prepare for tonight, uh, that open, the preservation of open space is indeed a top priority. In fact, I think it came out as the number one priority in the phone survey that was uh, part of the uh, planning or the creation of the uh, comprehensive plan. Uh, that's just going to cost money. So if indeed our town has as a priority the preservation of open space, then we are simply going to have to consider uh, uh, a municipal bond to fund that, at least in part. Uh, and what I would like to see from our community is a commitment to not only rely on public dollars to effectuate these goals that are laid out in the comprehensive plan, but also to look to the town's people for either private funding uh, through grants or uh, uh, local fundraising efforts to have a partnership essentially with the town that's uh, voluntary on the part of donors as well as what the town council may consider through a municipal bond and something that would be a significant expenditure such as the preservation of open space through a municipal bond. I would actually consider that putting that issue out to the voters. Uh, because if, for such a large expenditure, that would be, as far as I know, something that we haven't done before. I think we would want to get the input from the voters on that. Um, so yeah, there is a matter of prioritizing. Uh, I, I'm hoping that we're going to hear some specific questions about some specific initiatives tonight so we, all four candidates, can weigh in on those. Thank you. Just to respond to David's question about a bond issue. I, I I've served on the Maine Health and Higher Education Facilities Authority since 1999. I was appointed by Governor Angus King and reappointed by uh, Governor Baldacci about three years ago. And uh, current municipal interest rates are 6%. Now is not the time to go for a bond issue. What I think the comprehensive uh, plan for Cape Elizabeth may very well turn into an emergency plan for Cape Elizabeth. There are a lot of elderly people living on fixed income that have seen their retirement savings go down by 45 percent in the last year. These people, we have to prioritize how these people can continue to have the services to live in this town and keep this town a wonderful place to live and affordable. 71 percent of our town budget goes to the schools. I love the schools. I'm all for the schools. But we have to find ways that the municipal budget can be cut. It, was, it rose by 15% last year. There's no way that we can have municipal budget increase by 15% this year. We cannot have the town uh, budget increase 5.9% every year. It is impossible in this day and age. Thank you. Um, our next question is from a caller at home. Um, she was wondering if you support a spending cap for the town budget. Why or why not? And we're going to start with Ms. Swift Kayada. Well, spending caps, that's a topic near and dear in my heart. Um, I, uh, well, as treasurer of Citizens United, which was a, a political action committee that came into being when the Pulaski tax cap initiative came along, um, I worked on Citizens United to fight against a state tax cap. And I felt at that point that showing fiscal restraint on our own, on our own parts in town would uh, encourage people to defeat the Pulaski cap and then to defeat Tabor, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which was also a cap that came along. Um, I'm all in favor. I have a business background. I'm all in favor of setting targets. Uh, the targets that we set provide guidance for the town manager and for the school department as to what uh, the council's judgment is that, uh, that we feel that the people can bear. I will say that uh, when the uh, council was operating with targets and when the council had final control of the budget, which it no longer does, um, the, the uh, tax rate went up 3 percent, 1.5 percent, 2 percent, I'm sorry, 1.8 percent. Uh, and last year, the tax rate went up 6 percent. Now, the council is no longer uh, in control of the final tax rate because the citizens decide what they want for a school budget according to the new state-mandated process, and the citizens determine the final tax uh, that they want to pay. So that's sort of where I am on that one. Some may argue that one reason why the town voted to approve a budget that ultimately went up 6 percent is that the cap that was uh, pledged to by the uh, members of the town council 
was too low and we had some catching up to do. Uh, do I favor uh, spending cap across the board for our municipal and school budgets? I don't. Do I favor that our town be fiscally responsible and make sure we are making the right choices for spending our public dollars? Absolutely yes. Uh, but if, if we're going to be, as a town council, simply adopting a cap and holding to that, then I wonder why we even need to sit up here and deliberate over these issues. It would just be very easy to, for, for me as a town councillor to tell Mike McGovern, okay, your cap is 2%, deal with it. Or for me to tell the school uh, department, okay, your cap is X percent, deal with it. I don't think that's a productive dialogue to have. I would much rather hear from the school department, I'd much rather hear from Mike McGovern as to why spending uh, needs are there. And, and then we can determine if it's feasible to increase our taxes to cover those needs. If it's not feasible, then we're going to end up disappointing uh, the, the, the proponents of a particular school budget or the proponents of the municipal side. But we have to give some thought to, to what elements uh, or aspects or programs in our budgets we are willing to fund. Uh, I think the school has been, uh, unfortunately, a loser uh, the last three to five years operating under the pledged uh, spending cap that the Town Council adopted. Uh, I've heard from a number of local brokers that Cape Elizabeth isn't necessarily viewed as the top school system, even in the Portland region or let alone the state. We have excellent teachers, we have excellent students, but I'm, I'm worried, I'm growing more worried that they're succeeding in spite of what we are doing to fund the schools. Uh, I am not in favor of, of any tax caps. I think that uh, the needs and the wants of the community change on a daily basis. And it's important that the only cap that we, that we use is the revenue taken in. We cannot spend more than we take in. And it's important that we uh, prioritize how we're going to spend the money for Cape Elizabeth. And $30 million for a town of 9,000 is an awful lot of money. $18 million for 1,800 students is $10,000 a student a year. That is plenty of money to have a wonderful educational system in this state, in this town. The, there are other ways that we can save money. We talk about the, the dump. I know firsthand that if we were to hire at minimum wage middle school or high school students to work a couple hours each afternoon to check to see if people have dump stickers when they dump their garbage. They say we, we have 70% more garbage than our neighboring uh, people. I don't believe that at all. Certainly we have a lot of stuff in Cape Elizabeth, but we certainly don't throw it away. The, uh, I, I, would, I would guess that if you, if you turned away the people that did not have a dump sticker, you'd see that we'd save an awful lot of money. There are a lot of people that are doing jobs in Cape Elizabeth that take the stuff to the dump. There are people that are in Scarborough and South Portland saying, oh, I just go over to the dump and dump that. They're, they don't pick up the garbage till Wednesday. So, uh, I mean, there are other ways. We could fund our uh, uh, fire department. Let, let's, we'll all take turns, we'll put big rub, rubber fire boots at the entrance to Fort Williams and have a sign that says, our fire department is supported by the generous donations of the visitors to Fort Williams. Please help. Put five dollars as a, as a donation into this big rubber fire boot. I'll stand out there in a fire uniform for a couple hours uh, once a month, but we have to do initiatives like that. We can, we can raise money. For the record, I would pay to see Evan stand in a firefighter <laughs> suit in front of Fort Williams. Um, and so will a lot of other people. <laughs> That's, that's a way to raise now, see, revenue. That, that is the creative revenue generation that I am talking about. Uh, to answer your question, uh, the problem with the cap is that it assumes we live in a black and white world. We don't. It's like when I do surgery. Yes, I have a point B to get to from the point A I start at, but I have no idea how I'm going to get there sometimes based on what I find once I get into the problem. With the, school, with the budgeting, and particularly with the schools uh, that have taken a public beating for the past several years, we have to maintain some level of flexibility, realizing that some years we're going to have to take money from other areas and support one area, and the next year we might do the exact opposite. You know, we're paying professional educators like Alan Hawkins to tell us what they need. Why are we hiring them and paying them if we don't listen to them? 
The problem when we make arbitrary decisions with things like caps is that often we can make that decision and feel good about it saying, yes, we did something. But the problem is the repercussions of those decisions we don't see for years down the road. I would submit that we're starting to see the repercussions of those decisions right now in our school system. And we can liken it to an old house. I live in a hundred year old house that you know, is a wonderful home, but there have been good owners and there have been bad owners. The good owners have invested in the home properly and done the correct structural things that might have been more expensive at the time. The not so good owners did the quick fix and now it's going to cost twice as much to fix it. That's the problem with the cap. We need to think about that and be realistic about what we value in our town. Thank you. Um, you've all mentioned tonight um, increasing revenue and decreasing spending. What are some specific ways you propose to do these things? And this starts with Mr. Sherman. Sure. Uh, and, and let me just preface my remarks with these are all things that I think we ought to consider. It does not necessarily mean that uh, I think they're all great ideas, but I, I do think they're ideas that we ought to explore. Uh, possibly potential areas for savings. I look, um, first of all, I look to the school board and to the town manager, the superintendent, to really scrutinize very carefully their budgets to determine if there are areas where we may realize some savings. Uh, I, I frankly have no idea whether this would save us money or not, but we might explore whether reducing the number of days the town hall is open to the public uh, meaning that there's one less day a week that we're having to heat and turn on the lights in the building, uh, whether that may save money. I know, I believe the city of Saka recently explored, but then ultimately rejected that idea. Uh, similarly with the transfer station, uh, I, I would want to consider whether having that open not five days a week, but perhaps four or even three, might we realize some savings there. I'd obviously want to talk to the folks who work at the transfer station to determine if that's feasible. Um, there has been talk, and it's certainly mentioned in the comprehensive plan, whether we could uh, reach a cooperative agreement with the city of South Portland so that we would not need to maintain the Cape Cottage fire station or uh, without uh, obviously decreasing the, the level of service to that area of town. Um, an idea that I've had, uh, which has been floated by uh, uh, the district leadership team uh, when I served on the board for the Education Foundation, was whether the town consider hiring a grant writer uh, to see if there are dollars out there to support our schools. And uh, the city of Auburn has a full-time grant writer uh, whom I met the other week. Uh, perhaps we share the cost of a grant writer with three or four towns in the area to see if there are private foundation dollars that could be used to fund at least part of our education. Uh, ways that we can uh Enhance increase revenue, revenue and, and increase decrease revenue. spending. Uh, first of all, let, let me start by saying that uh, uh, I wasn't able to uh, be at the dump the last couple of weekends, uh, meeting and greeting, because uh, my wife has a small jewelry business that she started, and she's selling her wares all over New England. And this is our busy time of year. We were just uh, this weekend at the Wellfleet Oyster Festival, a Wellfleet in, on Cape Cod. Thousands and thousands of people attended that event. Wellfleet has a community of about maybe 1,200 people that live there year-round. In the summertime, it's much bigger. Wellfleet Oyster Festival attracted thousands and thousands of people generating hundreds of thousands of revenue for civic purposes for the town of Wellfleet. That was this weekend. We could have certainly had a Cape Lobster Festival at Fort Williams or have other things at Fort Williams that, that could draw a lot of people where the Family Fun Day is a prime example. That, an awful lot of revenue is raised for, the, for community events during Cape Family Fun Day. Let's have a couple of Cape Lobster Days. Let, let's, let's, you know, where it doesn't cost the town any money. Maybe we have to, you know, extra fire and, and police but to clean it up but the uh, it, you know the, the pluses will surely uh, take care of the minuses uh, another way to look at it is uh, the transportation system I think that the school bus program in Cape Elizabeth has to really be addressed the school lunch program has to be addressed I've eaten lunch at, at Scarborough and Yarmouth and I had many lunches at Cape Elizabeth and I'll tell you there needs to be something improved there dramatically Thank you. <laughs> He's a hard act to follow. 
you know, we talk about ways to increase revenue and reduce spending. Uh, on the reduced spending st uh, side, it's clear that I don't think we can really reduce much more from the schools than we have. If anybody goes to the town website and looks at, looks at Alan Hawkins' uh, review of the budgeting process from the past year, when they went from what they really needed to what they thought would be accepted, it's pretty clear we've, we've cut that down pretty much to the core. I think we need to look at the municipal budget very closely. Do we really need a replacement cruiser for the police at the cost of $30,000? Do we really need the kind of construction that we had at the police and fire station? Do we really need the number of town employees in town hall collecting our excise taxes? Can we find ways to do that through technology and pay our excise fees or things that we do at town hall through the internet? Why can't we revamp our town website to make it more efficient and reduce the need of, of human personnel? Uh, why, with every person that we hire for the town on the municipal budget, we're paying benefits, insurance, we're paying disability, we're paying workers' comp. That all has a cost, not to mention our debt service. We have $1.2 million this year in debt service that we have to come to grips with. As far as revenue generation, I think Evan hit it on the head. I think we need to be creative with events, things like at the park. I'd love to see us adopt some kind of user fees for the park, be it just stickers for large buses. Why not have community events like the Yarmouth Clam Festival? Why not have a jazz festival that others have mentioned before and tie things onto the Beach to Beacon? Why not develop the central business district here in town center with locally owned small businesses to help improve the tax burden on all of us? We'll never be South Portland or Yarmouth on Route 1 or Falmouth on Route 1, but we can certainly put a dent in that. And why can't we work with more, um, more things like um, um, uh, public-private partnerships like we did with Hannaford Field. We've got a lot of people in town that are parts of major corporations and leadership positions that we can use to generate more revenue that way as well. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, this is, this is the tough question. This is the core of what the council does. Try to figure out uh, how to manage the finances of the town because what you, how you manage the money determines what you do or don't do and how you serve or don't serve the people and the children of the community. Um, we have uh, limited opportunities to increase revenues be, uh, for the town because the major revenues for the town are state aid for education, the state controls that, uh, excise tax uh, revenue, which is dependent upon people buying new cars, which they're not doing too much in this economy, uh, state revenue sharing, um, which is, again, from the state, and since the state, uh, all the state departments have been told by the governor to cut spending 10 percent in the coming year, I don't anticipate that uh, increasing those major revenues is going to be happening if we're going to be lucky if we can keep those revenues flat. Some of these other proposals have been tried in other ways. They're good ideas. Some have been implemented. Some haven't. But frankly, they're all around the margins because they're sort of small revenues, small potatoes compared to the big revenues. The biggest revenue of all is property taxes. And one way we can raise revenue is raising property taxes. Not that I'm suggesting that. But that's the biggest funder of public services in Cape Elizabeth. As for decreasing expend expenses, well, we pay hundreds of thousand dollars to the county. We're legally mandated to have to do that. We can't cut that. They just send us a bill and we pay for it. Uh, the schools, I'm not proposing cutting the school, bit, the school budget. Uh, I think also uh, another major expenditure we could look at, but is that it's difficult to deal with, is how we deal with waste in this community. Trash, it's really mundane, but it's uh, over $800,000 uh, a year that it costs us to deal with trash. And if we could increase our recycling rates, we could actually do something significant with that. And I must mention in closing that, talking, as we talked about caps last time, um, these caps that everybody keeps referring to were not hard caps. If you look at the municipal and school budgets and the, their budget growth over the past three years, the caps were exceeded by the schools four years out of the last four. So they might have been targets, but I don't think you can call them caps because the, the school budgets went way over. And I will say the municipal, the town government, met those targets during those years. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Next question to you then. Our last question is about the intersection of Shore Road and 77. Um, do you 
um, support aligning Scott Dyer and Shore Road at a cost of approximately $1.1 million. And if you don't support this, what other solution would you propose that the intersection meets national standards? Mr. Lovato? Uh, I do not at this time support a street light there. Uh, and as I would volunteer to wear a uh, orange vest. <laughs> You, how do you find time to do for a regular a, job? <laughs> for a couple hours a day, and I will line up several other people in my neighborhood that will wear an orange vest and wear that during the busy times. of the. There are so many other things that we need to worry about in this town than the traffic problem on the corner of Shore and Scott Dyer. We just 400 yards down the road installed another street light at the school. I mean, we're, this is, it, it's... We, that's why I'm running for town council, because I want to bring some common sense to the town of Cape Elizabeth. One thing I'd like to know is, what's happening with this lot next door? Can we at least put a skating rink this winter there, or at least put some fire trucks there, and let's you know, sing Christmas carols or something out there? I mean, how long have we owned that, that thing that's, that's vacant? What's, what's the agenda there? We don't own it. It's it, private property. Oh, it is. It's private property. Yeah. Well, we should lease it to uh, put a skating rink or something. We should. We oh, it is. Get, we can give you a town breath. Bonnet. No. <laughs> yeah, we can't lease it if we don't own it. Okay. I'm. <laughs> the uh, anyway, I I I think that <laughs> there are other initiatives that we can take. Uh, I, I would much rather see the money spent on communications and and. Uh, 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 Things that could be help our school system. Uh, the uh, the Education Foundation has come up with with great novel ideas through through uh, private money, and I, I would much rather see town money spent in in, in a uh, a much more productive way. You know, let, let's you know lower the speed limit then from 30 to 25. Perhaps. <coughs> but I really don't think that we need a street light there now, and I don't think that's a problem. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, in, in preparing for tonight, my, my stylist told me that orange is not my color, so sadly I will not be joining Evan at the intersection of, uh, of 77 and Shore Road. I, I think the big mistake is to look at this as a black and white issue. I agree that the, I think the current plan is overly elaborate and certainly in today's economy far too expensive. But I also see the other side, that it is a significant safety hazard for pedestrians to try to get across Route 77. And it's a real problem for getting kids across that road. All it takes is one child to be injured or killed, and we're all going to look at ourselves and wonder why we didn't do something. I would love to have the, the, uh, the committee go back and try to scale it down significantly. Maybe it's putting flashing yellow signals as people approach up 77 so they, can, so they know that there's something over the hill. Maybe there's a much cheaper solution that will benefit everyone. And I think if we're going to talk about that intersection, we also need to have an open discussion about the Shore Road pathway. I think it's another tremendous opportunity to improve safety, and I think it's a great public access initiative if it can be funded through creative ways without busting uh, the budget or tapping into a large amount of money. I think we have to look at the needs of all of our citizens, both those on a fixed income and those who aren't old enough to vote, because both sides have needs. Thank you. Um, well, as you can see by the previous two speakers, um, there's some, some differences on this issue. Uh, changes at that town center intersection over there have been considered for years. Uh, and there have been many, many, many traffic studies. Um, in 2005, 49 percent of respondents to the Comprehensive Plan Citizen Survey felt that additional traffic lights in Cape Elizabeth were needed, with the majority indicating a need at, the, at that town center intersection. On the other hand, an equal 49 percent of respondents said there was no need for more lights. So obviously the community is divided, as we can see from the previous two speakers. In 2004, the council voted to apply for federal and state funding for a town center traffic light. I voted against the application since I wanted to see what the yet to be installed light at the high school would do to traffic flows. In the meantime, a number of traffic and safety studies have been done, all cited, all of them cited problems 
at the intersection at certain times of day. At certain times of day, it gets rated F for failing. A road safety citizen committee recommended changes at the intersection. And we on the council have received many, many, many comments, pro and con, from residents on this matter. The safety of pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers at the town center intersection is very important. And so as the council prioritizes the many important competing needs, land bonds, shore road paths, um, the schools, uh, recycling, the Thomas Memorial Library, the Spurwink Church, the many, many other things that people want to do, um, as we prioritize things over the coming weeks and months, I will be listening to citizen input and weighing the issues of safety, convenience, and cost when the time for final decisions come. And I will note, uh, for those who don't know, it is a state highway. Route 77 is a state highway, so we can't just scale down the intersection because the state mandates a lot of the things we can do there. Thank you. I think there's a good reason why the implementation of uh, safety devices such as a traffic light did make the comprehensive plan. I, I agree with Ann swift Kayata that there is a need to address that. Uh, or, or with the town council, excuse me. I mean, they started down this path uh, of uh, considering a traffic light for the town center uh, several years ago. It, it, it's not, they didn't lack common sense. I think there's a reason for the consideration of a traffic light in the town center. Uh, in, in my years in the planning board and in, in talking with Maureen O'Meara, our town planner, I respect her opinion. There have been many studies that indicate this is indeed a failing intersection. Uh, unfortunately, we come to the issue of cost. Uh, and knowing all the things that I know now about the town center traffic light and, and, and the issues that I'm expecting we're going to face with school budgets and, and uh, other uh, needs of our town, I would be inclined to vote against the approval of uh, the town center traffic light. And that is with serious misgivings, frankly, and serious apologies to Ms. O'Meara if she's out there watching. Um, it, it, it just doesn't seem to me to make sense to spend that kind of money now. When we originally considered, when we as a town originally considered a traffic light in the center of town, the price tag, I believe, was around $290,000, and 60000 of that was going to be the town's contribution. I think had I been a member of the town council back then, I would have thought that that was a good idea, that that amount of spending made sense to improve the safety of our town center. But now we're looking, unfortunately, at a price tag, according to an interview with Mike McGovern in, in one of the local papers, of three quarters of a million dollars. Uh, so I, I'm inclined to vote against that. Obviously, I'm going to hear, if I'm elected, listen to all of the views expressed by people in town and the experts. Uh, anybody in the town council has to do that. Uh, how could we address safety issues? I'd like to have a discussion with the police department to determine if a greater police presence in the town center uh, intersection area, at least during the heavy traffic times, could serve to improve the safety of that area. Um, we're now going to move to the closing. Each um, candidate has two minutes, starting with Dr. Zykowski. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ted Jordan and the, and the AP government class for having us here. It's been an eye-opener, uh, certainly for me, and it's been a great experience. You know, my family and I moved here in 1999 uh, for a job. But ultimately, what, what brought us to Cape Elizabeth was the school system for our children and the quality of life. Those are the two things that I think everybody in our town wants. There is a way to get there. And I think it's important as a town councilor to realize that there are people with other views than ours, and we have to be respectful of those. Uh, but we also have to make clear priorities. One of my clear priorities is to fund our schools appropriately. I'll make no bones about that. I believe they have been shortchanged for the past five years, and I think it's time to reverse that. It doesn't mean that I'm looking to raise anyone's taxes. I think we need to look long and hard at other areas of spending in the town, and I think we need to be creative with, cost, with revenue generation. If we don't support our schools, our property values will drop, the quality of life will suffer, and we're about to see a major shift in, in what's coming out of our schools. Those decisions that have been made for years are now coming to bear. And I fear that if we don't reverse the trend that we currently have, it's not going to be a pretty sight. I'm not the most polished person up here. I'm not the most prepared. I don't have typewritten answers to every potential question. But I will tell you exactly what's on my mind, and I'll never shirk a responsibility or an honest answer when I look anyone in the eye. And for that, I would hope for your vote. Thank you.
Thank you. In closing, I want to thank Mr. Jordan um, and his students for arranging this evening's forum. Thanks also to all of you out here in the audience and to everybody watching on TV. I'm running for re-election to the town council because I love Cape Elizabeth. I've lived here for 24 years. I've raised my family here and I plan to be here for a long time to come. I'm committed to this community. I have demonstrated that commitment by the work I have done in this town. We have a wonderful town here. I love Cape Elizabeth like everyone else up here and I know you do too. Yesterday my husband and I took a walk in Robinson Woods. We saw older people there as well as young families with small children which, who brought back memories of when our daughters were little and we used to take them for walks in that area. We saw a community that was benefiting from the investments we have made in what makes our town so special. Serving on the council is a privilege because the decisions we make will be the decisions, I hope, that ensure that those who come after us will be able to live in a Cape Elizabeth as wonderful as ours is. I hope to have your vote on November 4th so I can have the chance to continue to do my best, to work hard, and to listen to you as we all together pursue our shared vision of this, our special town. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to echo the thanks to the AP government class and, and Mr. Jordan. Uh, I think it's clear, uh, at least from my standpoint, that we have four uh, very sincere and, in my view, well-qualified candidates who are running for town council this year. And I would be honored to serve with any of them if I'm fortunate enough to be elected. Uh, I can't tell you sitting here behind this podium that I'm better than any of these folks. All I can tell you is what's motivated me to run, how I would approach certain issues that face us now in Cape Elizabeth, uh, and how I would approach issues that I, we, none of us may even be able to anticipate, and that is with a sense of fairness and also with a sense of optimism that we should continue to make this town a great place to live for all of our citizens. Um, I think all of us will tell you and probably have told you in, in their uh, blurbs in the various newspapers that we have the ability to work well with others and to listen to other sides of the issues uh, and that we're good listeners. And I believe that's true of every candidate up here. Um, I just thought in closing, rather than uh, talking generally, I'd just focus on a specific issue that I worked with, or I worked on, excuse me, when I was on the Education Foundation Board of Directors. Uh, I served on the foundation when we continued to have these de dis debates and discussions about the school budget and we were concerned about teacher morale uh, and the idea was we would create teacher awards to honor our faculty and our staff members to say to them, job well done. And I'm not saying this was a novel idea or that it was even my idea, but the reason why I got behind it was I thought it was a great idea. And if I find that there is a great idea out there in this community to make it a better place to, to live in, then I'm going to work very hard to make sure we can achieve the implementation of that idea for everyone's benefit. Um, so I would appreciate your consideration of my candidacy, and I hope you all get out to vote either on November 4th or through the absentee ballot process. Thank you. I, too, want to thank Ted and the uh, AP government class and uh, all the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I love this town. I've spent my whole life here, and uh, I think that I have the skills and the energy, common sense, to try to help this town make the right decisions during what I think will be some very tough fiscal times. Um, I was able to run a business, I made payroll, I uh, was able to do advertising, do hiring and firing, uh, I made people accountable, I'm not afraid to ask tough questions, I'm not afraid to go up against anybody, I have uh, uh, made it a point to uh, you know tell it like it is, try to find uh, out exactly why things are happening the way they are. I want to take a good look at, the, at our town government. I want to see the bureaucracy from its essence. Uh, 
the town council. I want to see exactly how it operates. I've known Mike McGovern for an awful long time. I've heard all kinds of stories about him. I knew him when he was a very thin man like myself. <laughs> the, uh, I want to see this town operate efficiently, effectively. I want it to uh, take care of the needs of all of the community. My mother was a teacher here. She gave her life to the students of Cape Elizabeth. I went back to school to become a teacher because I wanted to help the community. I wanted to see firsthand. I've coached for 20 years in this town. I love these kids. I taught fifth grade three years ago. There's a few rotten kids in the fifth grade then. They're in the eighth grade now. Hopefully they have matured. I know firsthand and I can bring my expertise to the town council and to Mr. Hawkins and to the school board and try to help make some good decisions and do the right thing. Thank you. I hope for your vote November 4th. Um, I'd like to thank all the candidates for coming tonight on behalf of the AP uh, government class and on behalf of the community as a whole. And I'd like to remind everyone to vote on November 4th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.